I'm Shonda Golden and you're hanging out here with me in the vault. Today we're going to be talking to Billy Duffy of The Cult and the one and only Fred Gretsch of Gretsch Guitars. Ta-da! Ta here we are. Here we are. And, and drums too! And drums! That's right! And drums! And, and drums. drums! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you gentlemen are here at Bizarre Guitar for the 130th anniversary of Gretsch Guitar and Drums. Correct. Right? That's it. We're, we're, we're here and you're catching on, Chandra. <laughs> Yeah. Catching on to the drum part. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's very right. cool. You know, it's so, kind, of, kind of a challenge when the, the name of the store is guitar. Right. And, and also get drum in there. Yeah, so. guitar, drums, and guns. Yeah, there we and go. And guns, right? That's mm -hmm. right. All the big boy stuff. That's right. So can you tell us what you're doing with these clinics? You've gone around to different dealers. Bizarre Guitar's been honored to be one of them. It's our 130th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So it started in 1883. Wow. Uh, Great-granddad great uh, came as an immigrant to Brooklyn at 16 years of age and learned instrument making and uh, came in 1872 from, from Mannheim. And so uh, fast forward, here we are today. Awesome. But the first half of the business was like educational instruments because mm -hmm. that's really where it, was, where it was at. And sure, there were professional musicians, uh, but... but uh, uh, jazz didn't come around, around till the 20s, right? And, and, and the business was 40 years old at that point. Mm -hmm. and, and and the designs that we made in the 30s and the 40s, rock and roll hit in the early 50s, and and those were the tone. That was the tone and the feel that that, that the guys wanted back then. Right. So, so here we are, 55, 60 years later, um, making those same instruments faithfully, and and. Uh, Lifers like uh, Billy Duffy here, who who picked one up in the 70s and and continues to play it. We we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for people like Billy who right. who uh, uh, liked the sound and, and stuck with it. And and uh, thanks, Billy. Yeah, that You're great Gretsch yeah. sound. I just do my little part. <laughs> <laughs> just a little part. Now big, you've always big, big part. <laughs> yeah, a big huge yeah, part. Big part. You've always played on a Gretsch, right? I mean, didn't you write your first album with the Gretsch? Um, the the. The, the White Falcon and the Gretsch very synonymous with, with the cult. Right. And, and when we started, it was a big part of sort of establishing the band's identity. Right. As well as, you know, what my, what my singer Ian did, my side of it. I was looking to find an instrument that was a little different because we kind of came out of the post-punk era. Mm -hmm. And as, as sort of fans of punk rock, we didn't really want to try and be a bad version of the Sex Pistols and the Clash and the right. bands that... I grew up listening to we wanted to try and develop our own sound mm -hmm. and you know Gretsch guitars um, and, and the folk and particularly I, I found a great way of expressing um, a kind of larger than life cinematic guitar sound that really right. fitted with what we were trying to achieve it was almost trying to we, we were trying to take like elements of like Ennio Morricone and mm -hmm. adapt that to kind of more of a, a tribal drum beat and we switched the emphasis of the bass guitar from being something that just simply kind of was low down and was with the kick drum. Right. The bass was more melodic and the guitar was more percussive and more haunting and that was the whole thing. And so the Falcon just became, you know, synonymous with the early cult. You know, right. and I've had one since day one. In fact, I actually had one in a band before the cult, which led me, that was the band where, where I met my singer. He was in mm -hmm. the opening act and... Right. Gretsch has been a, a mainstay of, of it all along. I mean, I've used other guitars, sorry, Brett, but <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, the Falcon's <laughs> always been, if you ask, probably most people I identify me in the cult right. with the big white guitar. And, I do. You know, it's like the white buffalo, you know, it's a legendary, <laughs> mystical, uh -huh. you know, it's a man's guitar, you know, not well, everybody can play one of these, you know. That's it's, true. It's a tricky instrument to get around, right? Did, you know. uh, developed in the mid 50s uh, and, yeah. and, and uh, about the same time as a Cadillac that's right <laughs> and you wouldn't want to take that around a racetrack would you <laughs> that, that, well right. you would now but not in the 50s <laughs> and, and, and it was made, meant to be brash and outrageous in the 50s right and, and what was brash and outrageous in the 50s entirely right. different today yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's amazing that Jimmy Webster the, the artist guy who, mm -hmm. who, who worked with uh, guys like like Billy back in the day and, and, and got great ideas uh, came up on that formula and, and mm -hmm. here it is 55 years later and very and, cool and, and and still going strong but but obviously you're playing it since the 70s we, we appreciate that you're yeah. you're one of the lifers that, that yeah. that's making a difference in 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 music so. well we I mean I really used it on the records a lot of guys would use them in videos apparently because they look good mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. no I actually made records yeah. with them and toured with them and for a period I mean that was my only guitar you know my my original 70s Falcon is 
um, literally is like I literally sold virtually everything I owned to you know what I mean? I, I read like, that. I, it's a true story, actually. Mm -hmm. I really, you know, because the guitar was incredibly expensive. They were super rare in England. It had to be imported from the United States. You know, he made an order, put mm -hmm. a deposit and waited in London. And Because uh, there was a little bit of a rockabilly thing. It was it, 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 There was a big rockabilly revival in the UK, right at the end, like 79, 80. Mm -hmm. And the Stray Cats were a very big part of that. And they were kind of friends of mine and amazing. And they, there was a Gretsch there. And um, it just kind of happened, you know. It was all a very kind of um, simpatico kind of situation. Well, I read that you called these guitars tough. Um, I, I mean, yeah, the guitar certainly takes a beating. You know, it looks fancy, but I mean, mm -hmm. I certainly abused mine. I've had many, many, many bouts of, uh, yeah. With, yeah, you, know, you got to be. Well, you're a kind way. of a tough guy, so it makes sense you'd have a Oh, no, a I'm good... a big soft, soft Are you? Anybody that knows me knows that, oh. really, yeah. I'm just a big softy. <laughs> He's tough. He's the tough I'm guy. I'm a softy. <laughs> <laughs> now the guitar wiggles and jiggles, but it sounds yeah. like yeah, yeah, it sounds like something cool. special. So can you show us around your guitar? By the way, um, this guitar is here at Bazaar Guitar. We are selling these, but this guitar is my guitar. Yeah. Because I'm taking this home tonight. Yep. Remember, I told yeah, you, yeah. Fred. I said, Fred, I'm taking that guitar home. So that's going to be my new guitar. Goodie for me. That's her parlor yeah. guitar. Uh -huh. <laughs> for a big um, I mean, the guitar. <laughs> it's basically. I mean, I'm not. It's. Um, the big thing I did with it, it, it's exactly feels and is exact feel of the 70s right. uh, guitar that I liked. It has smaller F holes and stuff. Um, about the only thing I did, I don't ever use a scratch plate. I've just never been a guitar mm -hmm. player that uses that, so this one doesn't have one. Um, just because all the guys I thought were cool in the 70s didn't have them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, <laughs> um, the, the bridge is pinned because mm -hmm. I rest a lot and put a lot of pressure on that. Right. So I, you know, it saves people the trouble having to get it attached. It's a standard, you know, that particular. What, what's that called? The official name for that? Uh, it's a wire arm on the big. Yeah, it, it just gives a much more. And, and Chet Atkins was the first to oh, develop yeah. that, that wire Very cool. arm. That's the only Bigsby I've ever really liked mm -hmm. personally. Right. Is this one? It just doesn't. It's not such a violent mm -hmm. action um, to the thing. So I kind of incorporated that into the sound where, because it's curved, you, you know, it's about stuff like that. Um, and and yeah, the curvature of it tends to just mean that you you, you don't get that hot like a Fender Strat. Right. It's the opposite of that, mm -hmm. which is kind of a very um, short staccato kind of thing. Right, right. Um, this is the opposite of that. And then oh, and the big thing we changed the, the 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 sparkle. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, silver binding. Silver binding, silver which I think is the only one, right? That's, that's right. That's, that's the right. first that's one right. they've ever that's done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, because a lot of it on mine, my one, it's had so much wear and tear that a lot of the gold had come off it just right. through, you know, thousands of gigs and, and stuff. So I kind of just got the idea and thankfully they went for it, you know, because, you know, we wanted it to look a little different. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful guitar. Uh, black position markers, uh, 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 which you chose as well. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Just the, the neck is exactly yeah. identical to my 70s guitar that it's forensically now i th i think i read that you let them use your guitar as yeah, they were building they... who's your master builder on this i forgot his name well stephen stern is a master builder for for, for Gretsch. okay uh, but uh, of course joe carducci was involved with the right build and, love joe and, 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 joe was uh, very involved right. in it and uh, chris fleming okay right, that's right. the name i chris remember yeah okay. right. there's a bunch of different guys the pickup as jo I, I will quote joe carducci has been reverse engineered because mm -hmm. Because I was trying to, the other thing about what I tried to do with the, the Falcon was kind of use it on a much more louder rock way, using wah-wah pedals and overdrives and mm -hmm. stuff that perhaps I felt hadn't been done as mm -hmm. much. You know, I tried to push it as much to kind of see how far I could take a hollow body guitar right. into the rock realm mm -hmm. rather than, I mean, great country, rockabilly, all that stuff. It does, everybody knows that. But I wanted to see how far I could make it go. Mm -hmm. So... We ended up having to get the pickup hotter um, because the 70s ones, I found the output was just not up to snuff. So Seymour Duncan actually made me one. Very cool. Um, lovely fellow. I think we'll yes. all agree. Sure, absolutely. And he... I'm, he, I, I, I'm a master pickup guy. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. So I went to him. He's got, you know, he's a tone guy. Right, right. And in the time, I mean, remember in the eight, we're talking like 86, 87, I had that done. And of course, at the time, everybody was making Dimarzios mm -hmm. and it was all like metal and like... right very like super high output and I wanted to retain the characteristics of the guitar and the tone right. but I just wanted more horsepower mm -hmm. 
And, and it was a time when Gretsch guitars weren't being made. Yeah, there was no, there was, not, there, not in production. There was no, yeah. So I couldn't go and get one. Now, right. of course, the pickups are great. And I have, I have other Gretsches that are more modern. I have more modern Gretsches um, that the pickups are great. The TV Jones pickups they do. So the, all the problems I had in the seventies have been resolved right. now. You know what I mean? But it, it, the seventies and eighties, the eighties <laughs> particularly, it was a little barren. Right. We had to. So Seymour saved my life. We've reverse engineered it so it sounds basically exactly like my one unique mm -hmm. pickup. Um, Very and, cool. And that's about it. The, the, you I know, love it. That's Thank it. you. I'll take it's my beautiful. guitar. Yeah, now. you want it? Oh, yeah, see, you want it gone? <laughs> you, know, you probably look better holding that than I do. Maybe it'll make me play? No. Oh, no, I like that. You no, I have I'm these gonna... beautiful guitars in my home and they just sit there. Because that's where I want them. Yeah, yeah. Nobody well, needs to play my guitar. I think they should do exactly what you want them to do. Yeah, and they're just going to look lovely in my home. Yeah, just like nice. both you gentlemen are. Oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you guys hanging out, especially coming down and doing this great um, clinic for us. Oh, and, and, awesome. and the website is... Billy oh yeah, the oh, website. Yeah. Let's sell it. If you want to see lots of sexy pictures of me and that <laughs> guitar and uh, <laughs> and stuff, uh, I've got BillyDuffy.com. Go figure. BillyDuffy.com. How easy is that? That's easy. And then you're tweeting now, Fred. You're a tweeter. Sure, sure. sure. Gretsch.com and GretschGuitars.com okay. and GretschDrums.com. Awesome. And, and, uh, and Fred Gretsch on Twitter. Yeah, and I'm tweeting now too under Mrs. Shonda Golden. If you want to follow me on Twitter. And if you want to see this guitar being wielded in anger, <laughs> come and see the court on our tour this summer. Oh, we'll yeah, that's and right. We're going around this great United States. Okay. On the Electric 13 tour. That's awesome. That's and so awesome. And I will be wielding this. Very cool. For and a substantial part of the show. Do you know when you guys, are you guys going to come to the States? Or are you going to play San it, Francisco? The tour, the tour, yes, we are. We're playing the Fillmore on nice. July the 27th or something Okay, like so that. July 27th, I'll be at the Fillmore. Might be the 28th. Or the 28th. I'll be there. You know. How's I'm, that? Yeah. Yeah, come. I'm Let's going to. Are you kidding? We're doing. It's going to be wielded. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you're in Reno, please come and check us out here at Bizarre Guitar. We've got all these great guitars. And well, I've got this one here. One of the great guitar oh. shops of the world. Really, Fred? What thank do you, think, you Billy? so much. I, I, I agree. It's, 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 thank we've you, been, gentlemen. We've been in plenty. Yep, absolutely. We've been in a lot of guitar stores, and this yeah. one's one of the best. Plus, you can get a, a firearm, should you need one. Should you need one. Thank <laughs> you so much. Should you need one, you next can door. next door and, and get a firearm, which is always quite a unique you know. <laughs> Thank you, know? you, and thank you so much for that compliment. My husband will really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Okay. All right, well, we'll catch you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.